What's going on guys, JSGC here and we are here for another Manchester City video. This time it's going to be the analysis of the Leon home game. Now I'm going to do this as professionally as I can, going to get on with the analysis and then at the end of the video I'm going to be talking about some of the problems that fans have been raising from this game, particularly in terms of atmosphere, things like that. I'm going to address that at the end with a bit of passion rather than professionalism because... It's not really an analysis, so for anyone that's interested, the first bit is going to be the analysis, then I'll discuss what people are talking about at the end. So I just want to say before we crack on, we're aiming for 2,000 subscribers, and before the end of the year, it would be fantastic if I could hit that before the end of the year, so make sure that you subscribe, put your push notifications on, be notified when I've uploaded. That would be fantastic. It's free, you know, that's how you help support my channel, help my channel grow, that'd be awesome. We're going to crack on with this analysis. So we're going to start off first with the team news. Mikel Arteta was in charge of the game. He was taking active part, a manager taking active part in the actual training session, but that's what was happening. He took part. Um, <laughs> team selection, I didn't agree with it uh, slightly. It was risky to start Delph. I went for Zinchenko. I can understand why Delph started. I mean, if he's fit to be on the bench, then you're fit enough to be in the starting 11. Sergio Aguero was on the bench, though. We looked a bit disjointed having Jesus and Gundogan in the same side, in my opinion. I'd have gone for Leroy Sane and Raheem Sterling on the two wings and then had the two silvers in the centre with Fernandinho sitting behind. But it's over and done with now. There's nothing much we can do about it. So we're going to crack on what happened with the game. And early on, we'll let, we'll let off, really, with Corne, the Ivory Coast International, the youngster for them. Rounded Edison scored just offside. Correct decision. Let off. Warning signs were there. Man City didn't take note of them warning signs. And on the 26th minute, Fernandinho gave the ball away. Some poor defending, poor closing down, allowing the ball to come in. I think it was Fakir. Don't hold me to that if he didn't put the ball in. But I think it was Fakir that put the ball in. The ball was good, but it wasn't a great ball in. And Fabian Delph was there just to deal with it. Simple, it's just tap it out for a corner. He completely misses his kick. It allows Corne to take on the shot first time. Beautiful finish, I may add. 1-0 Leon, shell shot Manchester City. Then, it kind of... Got into gear a little bit in the first half. Raheem Sterling was just offside after making a beautiful run. Uh, just mistimed his run slightly. He was offside, passing it back to Gundogan to put it into the net. That would have been 1-1, but there we go. And then the poor play continued in the first half in the 43rd minute. As Fernandinho and Laporte, I think it was, getting each other's way. Dispossessed for Kier. Very aggressive in the middle, by the way, Leon. Fantastic. I'm expecting more sides, particularly in the Premier League now, to try and do this. Where they sit with more midfielders sitting in the middle. Be aggressive in the defensive areas and try and hurt Manchester City going forward. Fakir was brilliant at it, being like a box-to-box -box attacking midfielder. He got forward, managed to uh, press Fernandinho into the mistake, gets the ball, has a shot outside the box, lovely finish. 2-0. Hmm. Took us to half-time, that one. Leon, I thought, were excellent. Excellent in pressing in the middle, like I added. Excellent in defending. So it was players like Mendy, Marcelo, Denaya. They didn't put a foot wrong in the first half. They were quick on the counter-attack. They had Manchester City's number, just waiting for the mistakes. They remind me a lot of what Liverpool do, how they play. They haven't got Liverpool's quality, I will add, but they've still got some very good football players there. Uh, Liverpool obviously are an excellent side, they're nice and quick, very aggressive, Leon exactly the same, they've not got Mo Salah, they've not got Sadio Mane, but they do have players like Fakir, they've got players like Corne, these are players that can cause you a lot of problems and they did, Man City slow, very very slow, just nothing there, sloppy, making mistakes, individual mistakes I will add that it was leading to goals, when you make a mistake you need to mop up Try and deal with things as best as you can, as professionally as you can. It didn't happen. One mistake led to another. When uh, I counted, particularly in that first goal, I think there was three or four mistakes in the end, which ended up resulting in that goal, which was very disappointing. And uh, I was hoping that Man City would make the changes that I mentioned at the beginning and ended up putting Leroy Sane on, which didn't happen until I think it was five or ten minutes into the second half. And we ended up having Gundogan coming off. And then when Sane came on, we ended up looking a lot better. But before that, Leon ended up having a chance to completely kill the game. Uh, they don't have a striker on so Memphis Depay was playing up front ball was played through again I think it was Fakir if he was running through Fakir I don't understand why Arteta didn't suss out try and man mark him out of the game or cause him problems you know like how Real Madrid dealt with Mo Salah's threat they man marked him out of the game until eventually went off injured in that Champions League final they should have been seeing that Fakir was their danger man man marked him out of the game maybe Pep could see it that Arteta couldn't it's a learning curve I, I don't know what the situation was there but it didn't happen it was disappointing. Anyway, Fakir plays the ball forward. It was a beautiful save from 
Edison on the one-on-one -on -one with Depay to tip it onto the post and keep us in it. Then on the 67th minute, Bernardo Silva ended up scoring for Man City as Leroy Sané made some fantastic runs in the game. He looks full of confidence, got himself an assist, and we looked a lot um, sharper with a fresh Leroy Sané in our side. We huffed and puffed to the end, ended up finishing 2-1. I didn't think we were fantastic in the second half. I thought we were better in the second half. I thought Leon weren't going to tire because they were sitting deep. They were. They weren't a part of the bus situation. It was more sit deep, be aggressive, win the ball back, then go. And that's what they were waiting for, waiting for the mistakes, and it ended up happening. So poor, really poor. So we'll have a look at some stats. I find stats quite interesting. Before I look at the match stats, I just wanted to say that this is Man City's third consecutive loss now at home in the Champions League, the first English side to do that. Our fourth loss in a row in the Champions League, and we have lost five of our last six Champions League matches, Basel away being the only game that we have won. Oh man, not a good record to hold that at all. So a lot of improvement there for Manchester City. So looking at the match stats, City ended up having just under 70% possession. So 30% for Leon there. Completely battered them. We had double the amount of shots, double the amount of shots on target. Lots of shots off target. Uh, Leon ended up having more block shots. City ended up having more passes, 711 compared with Leon's 316. City's pass completion rate, 90%. It might come as a surprise to everyone that Man City's passing was sloppy. You noticed it because when the passing was sloppy, it led to a Leon chance I will add because 90% is still very good it's just when they have been sloppy in that 10% Leon have been very clinical and Leon ended up having 316 passes at a pass completion rate of 76% so it's just suggesting this that Man City ended up having more than double the amount of key passes clear cut chances created though for all them chances that Man City did and everything in terms of clear cut Leon ended up having one clear cut Whereas Manchester City ended up having none. That was that one-on-one. -on -one. So we never actually broke down uh, their defence, really. So we managed to get a goal, but we never actually managed to get in and around to cause anything to happen. And then it was just all huffed and puffed from there. I expect Leon's going to dominate the... Uh, uh, the defensive stats, so they've had more tackles, City had more interceptions than them, more blocks, they had more clearances, more headed clearances, and ended up having joined the amount of aerial duels, which Man City won more, so there we go, their keeper ended up making more saves too, just a very disappointing evening for Manchester City all round, it's a home game, come on a home game loss now, we've got five games to try and put this right, two away from home coming up next, one before the international break in Germany, I think that's on a Tuesday, let me just check for you... I'm fairly sure it's on the Tuesday. Let's turn over to the next month. Yeah, it's on the Tuesday against Hoffenheim. That's an earlier kickoff, I think, at 5 to 6. I don't know why they've changed the times, but they have. Uh, but there you go. Um, so, yeah, we need to win that game, kind of. Shout out to Donetsk of Drew at home yesterday with Hoffenheim. They're on one point apiece. Leon are on three. City are on naught or bottom at the moment. We've got two away games before the international break in Germany, then one after in the Ukraine. Difficult games then. We can win both of them. We're back on track with the two home games. Man City will be looking for four wins. That'll see us go through 100%. That's what we need. We've got five games to get four wins. Two difficult away games coming up. All to do. A lot of pressure here for Man City to deal with. Pep Guardiola handed no initiative. But there we go. Things have been done. He's already said the things to the referee that's been said. He's been suspended. That's over now. We've got Pep back for the next game. And hopefully we can have a better result. Luckily... Uh, everyone hates playing every three days because it leads to player fatigue. Luckily, when you don't have results go your way, the advantage of playing every three days is you've not got a lot of time to dwell on this loss because the next game's coming round thick and fast. So, yeah, we've got the Cardiff game coming up, then a League Cup game, then another Premier League game, then a Champions League game, then a Liverpool game. Do you know what I mean? The games are coming thick and fast. So there's a lot for the players to aim for. There is no time to dwell. They can't afford to dwell at this moment in time. So to conclude, really poor first half from Manchester City. I'm disappointed for Arteta because Arteta will set everything out like Pep does, done everything that Pep does. The players just haven't performed. That's what's happened. I think it's down to individual performances. I know they were a bit sloppy with the play, and I know that the team was a very lethargic and going forward and very slow, slowly moving the ball, hoping that they'd tire and they wouldn't tire. That was poor. Uh, that's something for them to work on, but individual mistakes. Fernandinho, Fabian Dell, Ilki Gundogan, Bernardo Silva, not very good in this game. Gabriel Jesus, you know, all poor uh, yesterday night. So that's things for them to aim for and try and improve on. But you can't afford poor performances and expect to win. You can't. It's the Champions League, like Arteta said. You know, you're playing the best. Any mistake, it's going to get punished. Leon, very clinical in the first half, end up taking the three points. We move on and we aim for the next game and we aim for our other five Champions League games to try and put this right. So let me know what you think in the comments below. So I'm just going to talk a little bit now about what fans are talking about. The fans at the moment are talking a lot about the empty seats at the Etihad Stadium. I have no idea about how to fill them seats because I think Man City's prices are very reasonable. I put it down to mentality of the fans. A lot of the fans... 
if we get to the last 16, we end up playing a big side, or we played a big side in the group stage, and things would sell out because everyone wants to watch that big side. Whereas when you're playing teams like Lyon, like Chateau Donetsk, like Hoffenheim, I'm expecting all them to be the exact same, by the way, in attendance-wise, then it struggles to sell out, and they end up having a load of empty seats, and that's just down to the fans not wanting to go. Now, fans don't want to go because they don't believe in UEFA, hence they're booing of the anthem, they don't like what it stands for, and fans... We'll put it simply, they prefer Premier League football. They don't like Champions League football. But I like Champions League football because it sets the best from the very best, if you get where I'm coming from with that. So you get the best of each each division and everything, and it sets it apart, and you find out who is the best. And so that's where Manchester City need to improve on. Man City are aiming as a club to try and win the Champions League. I think the fans should get behind the team and try and back the boys to try and win the Champions League because at the end of the day, that's the only prize left for us to win now is the Champions League. We're waiting for that European moment, that European magic. Every time I go to a European game, I always feel like something magical is going to happen. You feel like you're a part of it. You feel like, oh... You're lucky and privileged to be here. This is a big Champions League game. There's teams that have worked hard for decades and decades to try and get back to their best and everything like that. And we get to compete season after season in the Champions League now. It's been going on for is it six, seven seasons now. Uh, and I've loved every moment being in the Champions League. And I think that fans shouldn't take that for granted. They should get behind the boys. If you can get to a game, you can get to a game. If you can't, then you can't. That's fair enough. There's a lot of finance issues and everything. But the club, they're charging reasonable prices. Honestly, I'm going to the Shatar game. The Shatar game for me and my girlfriend has cost me, I think it was £55, which is charging less than a championship game for two people to go and watch. I think that's good value in money. We're sat up in second tier as well on comfy seats. I think that's a good value for money. I'm really looking forward to the game. I'm hoping that other people will end up getting behind the boys. So if you can get to a game, help support the boys, then do. It's a big campaign. The bookies keep saying that we're favourites. We're not favourites. We're one of eight teams that could possibly win the Champions League. You can't possibly be favourites. You're asking me for a favourite, then you've just got to look at the Spanish teams due to their consistency. If you can beat them Spanish sides, then then you can start talking about being the favourites. At this moment in time, we've we've never beaten in a knockout phase a Spanish side. So, yeah. We're not the favourites. That's just Bucky's putting unnecessary pressure on us. Hopefully this uh, match and this loss uh, will give Man City the much-needed kick now to go on for the season and think, I don't want to lose another game. Have them feel upset and angry and just want to win every single game. Go back to being ruthless. Sooner we can get Kevin De Bruyne back, I think, the better. But, yeah, uh, maybe, I don't know what Man City can do. I think the marketing and the pricing and everything, they've done everything correct here. I think they just need to maybe have a word with the supporters groups and everything and try and get more people believing in the Champions League. I understand why fans boo the anthem, by the way, because UA for what they stood for, particularly with that terms of CSK Moscow and that racism, then allowing in a 1,000 or so CSK Moscow fans into the stadium whilst City fans had travelled miles and miles, spent hundreds, if not thousands of pounds, and not allowed in. Absolutely disgusting, but we're not here to think and talk about UEFA, we're here to think and talk about Manchester City, because at the end of the day, that's who we support, and that is all that matters, and all that matters is on the pitch, and if we can help be a part of that, help see it and help support the boys, then so be it. Come on, Blues. We'll have the match preview up for the next game, the Cardiff game. You want to go and check that out. That will be up tomorrow for you guys to enjoy. If you did enjoy the video, don't forget to leave a big thumbs up. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, please. I'd love to know everyone's opinion on this. Also, don't forget to check out my social media links. They're in the description below. And also, don't forget to check out my second channel, JSGC Gaming, and my brother's partner channel, Mix It, Do Mix All The Drinks. I'll leave the links up to them at the end of the video. We'll go check them out, like, and subscribe. Don't forget to share the video. Help my channel grow. 2,000 subscribers we're aiming for, so don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you all again tomorrow for another Manchester. City video, go and check out all my other videos. I had a nice discussion yesterday with just me and the camera and the microphone talking about how Riyad Mahrez can go and improve. So go and check that out. I'll leave the link to that at the end of this video. And I'll see you all again tomorrow. So it's been JSGC. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Ah, I hate losing. Peace. Ciao for now.